Upon meeting Heather, one would assume that she's no different than any other 12-year-old girl. She's full of life and energy, loves to laugh, play video games, just a normal girl. However, there's so much more to Heather than meets the eye. In fact, her very existence is remarkable. She is a miracle. This is her story. Uh, I was pregnant about um, 32 weeks along. Pregnancy is 39 weeks. And everything had been really good up to that point. You know, I had some discomfort, you know, I was getting big, but I was older. I'm 38, you know, I knew that it wasn't going to be as easy as the first one. She's like, well, can, before you leave, can you just tie my shoes for me? And I went to tie her shoes and noticed how swollen her ankles were. And like, I really think I need to go to the doctor's office with you. We got to the doctor's office and uh, there was obviously something that was different because they wanted us to go down to the Clearwater office, they said they had a better sonogram down there. So they take us in, they take us back, they, you know, do the sonogram and... No one's really telling you anything, but you know there's something wrong. And after a while, the doctor comes in and is like, you know, like, we're not really sure what we're seeing. It looks like there's some excess fluid and we're not really sure why. And that, so we would really like you to go over to St. Joseph's over in Tampa where they have some specialists that we would like you to, you know, have them take a look and see what they see in that. The doctor came out to the car and said, uh, well, you know, we, we want you to not, you know, lollygag or whatever on the way over because we think you could get there faster by car than by helicopter. And that's when I think Jim and I looked at one another and went, hmm. What's up? When we get to St. Joseph, they're waiting on us. There's people outside. And, and they finally said, you know, okay, we're, it's going to be all right. We're going to go in and, you know, we're going to go in and take the baby now. We're going to go in and um, take care of everything. And they did the emergency C-section. They take Heather away. Uh, and they don't tell us why. The doctors come in and, you know, the doctors don't have good diagnosis. The doctors told us that there was a possibility that Heather would need a heart transplant. Her chances of survival went down every day and she didn't have a high chance of survival to begin with. You don't know when it'll happen. You have no idea. All you know is now you're on the list now she's in a place waiting and you could wait one day you could wait six months i think for anyone your belief in god is going to be important if you don't have that then you're putting your hope in the doctors and you're putting your hope in what next new thing of science can help my child when i look at heather it's not about heather you know it's about god is going to use you in a big way later on in your life and this is how it is your story is so specific and so refined that there will be people thousands of people who will never even relate to it but then there will be the one that does and they need that hope you know and and i look at like heather's testimony that she has um I mean, I look at it for me as an adult, I've never had a heart transplant. You know, I've never really had a big physical whatever, but I guarantee that the stuff that Heather has gone through, there is a kid out there or an adult or a person, when they hear this story that they're about to go into that, the heart transplant, all that stuff. Well, here's a girl that did, and this is where she's come out. Well, there's hope in that story. There may be a person that like, they want to save someone's life, maybe you like don't know how. But like they want to see what would happen if they were to do something and they want to see the positive results of it. But then like hearing my story they might be like, wow, you know, that's a really positive result that's happened. You know, maybe that really is something I want to do. So I 
I get home, the answer machine goes off, and it's a message from whoever. I don't even remember who called, but it was, uh, we have a heart for Heather. Oh, please, please don't let it happen before, before we get there. L let me see her before she goes in. And we're in the room just waiting to hear anything, and an hour goes by. They come out, and they're like, the heart's in route. So, yeah. It's just, you know, you're waiting. It's going to happen. Okay. This is a healthy heart. This is going to work. We're going to get to be a family soon. Then they'd come out and they say, the heart's here. Then they come out and say, you know, we've done it. You know, it all went well. Okay. Now we have to see how she handles it. Then the next day, uh, we were able to actually see her for the first time. And she came out and she still had, you know, the tubes. She had more wires on her now than she had before. Uh, um, but you could see she did have better color to her. Her eyes were never opened as wide as they were as the day after her transplant. She had the biggest, brownest eyes and they were just gorgeous. And then she opened her eyes it was, this is my world. I'm, I'm here. And yes, you know, we had questions about the donor and the baby and knowing that someone else's child had had to pass in order for our child to live. That was sad but we always wanted to think that wherever this child was in heaven that this child had allowed our child another chance at life My name is Heather. I am one of the many stories of the transplant games. 